Are you ready? Stand by. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Hartman and welcome to The Three Gun Show, the world's largest three gun podcast. This is a special anniversary episode of the podcast. That's right. The Three Gun Show is four years old as of the day this podcast drops, which is Monday, April 1st, 2019. So this week's podcast is two days early, but next week we'll be back on our regular schedule. In the meantime, enjoy this podcast with Ruben Alexson and Adam Maxwell of Vortex Optics, where we discuss the perfect zero for your rifle. That's right. The perfect three gun zero. Guys, welcome back to the show. It's the next day. Day two Vortex Optics. We have a very special podcast to talk about here. Yeah, it's going to be great. And we're on day two of a five day tour in Wisconsin for Dave. Five day tour. A five day tour. Yep. Uh, that sultry voice is uh, Ruben Alexson. The first one you heard is uh, Adam Maxwell. And what better place than Vortex Optics to discuss something that Ruben and I have had in development for, was it probably seven months now? When was uh, I here in July last time? You were here in July, yep. Okay, so when, when I was here in July last. You were here in July. Yeah. Um, let's see. I just came from a Jeff Kirkwood Memorial match, right? Mm-hmm. And I shot the UH1 there. We shot the uh, shoot off, worked out really well. I was just yeah. coming off the Colorado three gun championship where I shot patrol. So Ruben uh, is like, "Hey man, you want to go do some uh, some long range shooting out at the uh, farm?" And I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna need to borrow a scope. Do you know anyone who has one?" <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> so we made some phone calls, did some research, found a couple in the local area. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so we uh, we uh, I'm sorry, you got to take that off. There you go. Um, we. Uh, we stopped by Ruben's house, grab a scope straight off of one of his rifles, and uh, he puts it on my, or we put it on my rifle. We head out to the the range, but now we don't know, you know, different rifles. We don't know what's up, different ammo, stuff like that. So what we did was we stumbled upon the perfect zero. Well, and when when we say we stumbled upon it, um, this is something that I had been starting to research and so when we oh, popped really? the optic yeah i wasn't really allowed to talk about it but when we popped the optic on to your rifle it was it was zeroed on one of my rifles and um y you know if you have a high quality ar a lot of the times the alignment's very similar so mm -hmm. when you take the scope off of one on a quick release mount and put it on another it's going to be very mm -hmm. close and so we did that uh we get to the range and you're like well you know and Sounds like there's a little more to the story here, but so w we uh, we find the first steel target and we're like, we'll just get a hasty zero here. Yep. Turned out it was 140 yards. Exactly, 140 exactly yards. Exactly 140 yards. And then from there, we punched in the data into uh, Street Lock, and it lined up for the the basically the most frequent targets that we see in three gun. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think a pretty pretty significant discovery. Yeah. For our sport. The 140 yard zero. The 140 yard zero, huh? Yeah. And so the, uh, so I, I normally shoot MRAD, uh, the, uh, an MRAD reticle, the VMR2. Milleradians. Milleradians. Yeah, exactly. So what, uh, what Ruben has that had there was the JM reticle. Ah. And so with that 140 yard zero, it was incredible just to, you know, we had like a sea of steel out in front of us because it's out mm -hmm. of the, uh, the Vortex farm and just, Ding, 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 it's ding. just the language of love. Super quick, super fast acquisition. And, like, the uh, the hash marks lined up perfectly for the most sp the most frequent targets that we see in 3-Gun. It was incredible. Yeah. Uh, so, really, what <clears throat> what Dave and I wanted to talk about is, you know, we've, we've been doing some of this Q&A stuff over the last couple of days and going over some of the, the really frequently discussed things on forums and on talks and you know what distance do you zero at for three gun is uh something that comes up all the time and uh you know what better place than than here at vortex where we've got uh indoor range and we've got an outdoor shooting facility to uh really dive deep into this stuff we've got you know 
Kellen Beauchene is a test engineer here, and uh, he's he's been really like trying this out on a lot of different platforms. And you know, Adam and I are going to matches a lot, so this is something that we've been really diving into as well. Running the whole gamut of barrel lengths too. Yeah, and th and that's really where this what I would call breakthrough really shines. Mm -hmm. Rubber really hits the road. You know what's yeah. incredible is, is how long uh, Three Gun has been around and. And nobody's figured it no. out. Usually you'll find like a 50 to 100 yard zero if people are going to uh, like Hornady Zombies uh, zombies in the Heartland. It's, you know, like a 25 yard zero or 30 yard zero because they're worried about those clays, but no one's ever exceeded. I mean, there's, there's a lot of an in institutional inertia <laughs> around where to zero these yeah. rifles because they started life as military rifles. So most of the people, a lot of people initially came to the sport from the military and they're like oh yeah they, they beat this into my head so this is this is how we do this mm -hmm. and uh, nobody really moved off that you know it's 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 a matter of like oh well this always worked before so i don't really like math so i'm just gonna just gonna stay where i'm at <laughs> yeah you know it's true and, and another thing um <clears throat> when we're looking at different reticles and um you know different shooting methods a lot of times what you'll see with uh guys that shoot the like a mill reticle or an moa based reticle um as opposed to a bdc is you'll see guys that will do a 100 yard zero mm -hmm. just because a lot of times their hash marks will line up more cleanly um but if you're shooting a bdc it's almost always expected that you're going to do a 200 yard zero because a lot of bdc reticles are built with the uh you know, the sub tensions working out to 300, 400, 500, and 600. But every time that we change loads or we change um, barrel length, that, that kind of gets screwed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for, for me, with a an 18-inch rifle, and uh, I had a 77-grain sear Match King projectile, um, it's going about 25. <laughs> what was that? It's like the perfect bullet. It's choice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 25, 57 feet per second. And what grain bullet? 77. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I'm looking at the, uh, with my 140 yard zero, which I've been running ever since. Yeah. I, <laughs> you signed that NDA, right? <laughs> yeah. And I feel bad because I talk about the 50 yard zero a lot. Yeah. Um, but you did, I did have to sign the NDA. So I mean, it's proprietary, right? Not anymore. We're going to give this to the world. Yep. All right. So. Brace yourself. So with my 140 yard zero, my first hash mark is 290, which is very close to 300. And then I go 405 at two mil, 508, 603, 691, 773, 851. One more time. I'm bad with numbers. It's cool. So I'm just going to keep it within 600 yards, which is where we live in three gun. Yeah. All right. So uh, one mil is 290. Mm -hmm. Two mil is 405. Mm -hmm. Three mil is five oh eight, mm -hmm. and five mil is six oh three. That's like absolutely me, as mil, close as you could expect it to be. Yeah, yeah, and and then for all the uh, intermediate targets, you just uh, bracket in there. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was with seventy seven grain ammo out of a eighteen inch barrel. Yes, seventy degrees, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. So what I did to show and further show the the versatility of this zero distance is um i zeroed using uh 60 grain hornady v maxes mm -hmm. which is a very popular load it's something that we um uh use here at vortex a lot to create like an average ballistics curve for a lot of you know popular cartridges um <clears throat> that people will shoot in the sport so like the jm1 reticle was developed using a, a 60 grain v max so with 140 yard zero the first thing i'm going to do dave is i'm going to take a step back and I'm going to move, and I've got a perfect zero at 100 yards. So if you're shooting a plate rack or shooting smaller targets, um, I'm actually zeroed at 100 yards again. Mm -hmm. And to anyone who wants to verify this, I'm I'm running um, both iStraylock Pro and Shooter Ballistics. So using a... Uh, it's like the, the bloods and the crips of... <laughs> yeah, it is really, but you, you know, you, you gotta can't cross. really get them to agree on much. But you got to cross they agree verify, on. okay? Yeah, and so um, it's real journalism. Running a, a sixty grain Vmax uh, out of a eight twist, eighteen inch barrel at thirty one hundred feet per second. Okay, that's a that's a. It's all. In. It's a it's a pretty 
pretty signi- uh, pretty standard, like widely accepted velocity range and grain weight. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I go out now um, and moving out from there. So running the JM1 to show how you can use this this zero distance on um, a on a BDC reticle. Um, like I said before, I've got a hundred yard zero and a hundred and forty yard zero. Uh, but I'm looking at my hash marks, which are going to be 280 for the first one, okay. 390 for the second one, 495, and 600 on the money. That's amazing. <laughs> that is, that is pretty awesome. Yeah, I can't I can't believe how how well it works in so many different areas too. Yeah, it's almost like one of those things where you can't. It's like a recipe that you can't screw up. Yeah, yeah. It's um, and then and then you sit there and you think like um. Gosh, you know, how did, how did we not see this before? You know, it seemed like it was right there the whole time. I uh, yeah, absolutely. It's like, and you've been executing the same the same drops the whole time. Mm-hmm. It's just like chewing the reticle to the trajectory. Yep, it was just a it's just a subtle adjustment. It, it's 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 basically asking the bullet what it wants and then giving it to the bullet. Yeah, it's really. I mean, and that's what rifle shooting is. It's really an interpersonal relationship with the bullet. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah, Adam, you've uh, you've been using the 140 yard zero since I brought it to you after Dave and I's range session. You want to talk a little bit about your findings? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, mine's a little bit more preliminary, um, because we spent most of our time working with common barrel lengths, so I kind of got voted off the island until the end so because of the shorty yeah <clears throat> yeah because of the shorty but i mean it's it's similar with the shorty um i mean i i uh i've kind of arrived at 11.875 inches on the barrel um that's that is specific yeah it's a nato spec that yeah. that primary weapon systems uses on the mark 111 what velocity are you typically running with like the 60 grain 55 grain uh, twenty-seven fifty-one. Okay, this is, this is pretty much where I'm at. Standard deviations. Yeah, well, within, within I, I tell you what. Balls. When um, so I'm wearing a a UH one shirt today. Uh, and you so lo- and you really pull it off. Thanks, buddy. I I, I like this thing. So I uh, actually looked up the UH one reticle. Mm-hmm. And man, it you know it even works for one X, one hundred mm-hmm. forty-two yard zero. I mean, you're you're looking at uh like a sixty-six yard and a hundred forty-two yard. Zero, you know? Yep. And then everything else you just hold up or down. Yeah. Yep. I mean, because, I mean, you lost you lost about, what was it, what did you lose, like three, four yards going from from your your load to Ruben's on the on the first hash? Weren't you like 290? Oh, we were, we were using different reticles, but, yeah, mine was uh, 290. Oh, okay. So you're 290, and, and so you're – you're the mill radian. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're the JM. Yep. I shoot the mill most of the time. Like, I mean, you know, I'm losing a little bit of velocity, but I'm still at like. You're saying 2751, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll I'll plug this in for you here quick, and you can give people the exact numbers. I tell you what, on that on that UH1, when you're looking at the uh, the little diamond that it has in the in the bottom, the CQB zero. Yeah. In the bottom of the. A lot of people hole. sleep on the delta. A lot of people sleep on the Delta. Wow. Wow. Such inspiration. Dang, that was profound. Anyway, <laughs> so that also becomes uh, your 923-yard hold. I often call it the, the Hail Mary triangle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because at the bottom of that is like uh, 1,011 yards. <laughs> right. Or excuse me, 1,111 yards. So yeah. Even more. And it was funny because I actually I put this using this 140-yard zero – I put this on my uh, my seven and a half inch, uh huh, um, PDW, while we were out at the extreme last year. And the stage that I was at, um, one of the targets we had was it actually was three ninety three or nine thirty three. Nine thirty three. Mm-hmm. You just covered the target just, with that triangle. Just tip of the triangle, press the trigger, send it out. Ding for days, son. <laughs> I like it. Seven and a half inch barrel on XM 193. I don't know what velocity that is because it would probably wreck our chronograph. <laughs> <but> <laughs> um, That's just incredible. It's just, you know, 
another testimonial for the 140 yard zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah. I mean, like, I we only. So, so you've got Streelock pulled up right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm Streelock special. So Ruben helped me a little bit. Cool. Um, but um, so my, like my first hash on the uh, on the mill reticle with eleven eight seven five is uh two seventy nine. Man, <laughs> that is super close to three hundred. It's so close. I mean, close, close enough. Yeah, you know, right. for shooting yeah. a four-minute target, and then from there it's three seventy, four forty-five, five hundred seven, five sixty-one, six hundred eight, and uh, six forty-nine. So yeah, I mean, there's it, data there. There, there's points there that are useful for almost every match we go to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't tell you like over the last three years of traveling around shooting matches how many targets have fallen within that range. Like I shot a 405 yard target one time and, uh, the very same match shot a 430 yard target. And both those targets would have been easily achievable with this zero. Well, yeah. And, and everyone, you know, over the years, everyone always kind of talks, you know, everyone's got their own dope card, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many hours spent in the, in the car with Jake Latola going down to the blue Ridge, you know, he's just nerding out on this list that he made <laughs> and, and it, it couldn't get over like, we were talking, Ruben and I were talking one day, like, I mean, the numbers are very, very similar. Right. So one day we just plotted it out on whiteboard, just started drawing out the arc. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where we zeroed in on like this intersecting point for all these different, different velocities, different barrel lengths, different bullets that kind of hovered around this one spot. And 140 yards is a sweet spot. Yeah. Wow. And then we had to, then we had to put it down, put it down on the range, you know, because... Because the book learning only goes so far, you gotta sure. Well, now I'm I'm still, you know, laughing that Ruben uh, had me fooled into thinking that it was a happy accident that we uh, parked the truck 140 yards from the from the uh, target. Yeah, it was just a flat spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's one of those things where you're like, "Oops, did you see that?" Like, yeah, you, you don't want to you don't want to give it all away, but just, just hidden right there in plain sight. You need to kind of start the hype without starting the hype. All right. So, all right. Well. Going forward, like if if someone wants to try out 140 yard zero, let's talk about next steps. Like how mm -hmm. how do they how do they get that zero in their life? Well, yeah, you, you start by putting the target at 140 yards. Okay, so you need to find yeah. a bay with more than 100 yards. Yeah. Well, and here's the beauty of that, really. Okay, and and not to not to interject, Adam, but if you have a hundred yard range, mm -hmm. you zero it at a hundred. And it's yeah. also going to be zeroed at 140. Wow. Yeah. Just, just the way just the way the trajectory is is arced at that particular point, like it's a very it's a very flat part. It's almost at the uh, at the zenith of the curve. Okay. Yeah. For that initial acceleration out of the barrel. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So uh, I've got my 140 yard zero now. For me, it took a little bit to get used to, mostly because I had to carry around two zeros in my street lock, one to show people that I was still using the 50-yard zero, and then one for my actual data, which was 140 yards at that point. Have you have you guys found any uh, problems in switching to the 140-yard zero? Um, you know, just like any new gear, new method that you try in the sport, you're going to have to do a little bit of dry fire. You're probably going to want to put some reps up on Instagram. You're going to... You're definitely going to want to get out to the range, you know, maybe one time before you shoot a major. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that's pretty good practice. Um, don't be excessive. You know, don't don't hit the range every day before you go to a major. But right. um, dry fire really is key when you're switching your zero distance. And so I think it, it really it bears true to a lot of what we do. I mean, it's all in your head. You need to just make sure that you remember your new holds. And if you do that, you're you should be good to go. Yeah, and I, and I think once you get those new holds in your head and you're able to remember them, you're gonna end up feeling them. Yeah, and and it's it almost comes back to instinct. Yeah, um, you know, using your natural point of aim. I mean, I don't know that we really even need those holds because if you c truly could connect with yourself and your ballistic calculator, you would be able to um, 
like are you familiar with like um traditional archery yes where they're not using any type of pin sights or anything mm-hmm. like that huge um, fan uh, like if i give you a football and i said throw that football at that person across the parking lot i don't need like, holds no you know just, you, you just know, gonna give it the full send yeah well i mean you know exactly how hard Did to throw that football have a hold on his spear no, oh. no. I mean, he knew, depending upon the distance that the target was, that he just had to throw it a certain, you know, with a certain amount of force or hold a certain amount above that target. And right. I think that <clears throat> if you can um, if you can practice enough and visualize enough, um, we've all read with winning in mind, if you can visualize that hit, that you're, you're just going to hit. I think that's great advice. Well, guys, I'm, I'm really – I'm excited to share this with the uh, the three gun community. We truly have found the perfect zero, and I want to thank you for being a part of this. Yeah, podcast. and I, I'm actually really, really excited that we don't have to talk about it on for, um, forums or Facebook groups anymore. I think yeah. it's it's we can we can move on to other things now mm-hmm. yeah. that are more important. I'm very relieved because the double the double life was really the hardest part. Yeah. Now I just wanted to share it with the world, and we finally got the chance. So I'm going to go shout it through the halls of vortex. You wa- you want to go right now? Let's well, do it. Unload show clear. All right, if you've listened this far, you are either passively punching data into your ballistics app while you're listening and checking our math, and, and you've, or you've figured out that this was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> That's right, there is no perfect zero in three gun, as with most things in life. The answer is to do what's right for you. Uh, generally, I go with a 50 yard zero because I'm guaranteed at least. 50 yards when I go to a zero bay at a major match. But part of this story is true. Ruben and I did go out to shoot with uh, one of his scopes on my rifle at the uh, the Vortex Farm. And we got a hasty zero at a 140-yard target. And then we were ringing steel out to like 860 or so. So all that really proves is that the bullet doesn't lie. And you just need to do all the other work necessary to make sure that you get those hits yourself. Uh, which includes the the chrono, the research in, into your uh, your barrel length, your twist, all the stuff that goes into your ballistics app. The podcast will be back on Wednesday next week. So in the meantime, happy Three Gun Show, four-year anniversary to you. Thank you for sticking in with me over this run, and I'll see you on the range.